so I built a seven figure business in less than four years and now we're positioned to actually be generating over seven figures year after year. We have Megan Sabro, founder of The Pink Bee, a seven figure coaching business with just 18,000 followers. I I'm much more interested in having a smaller audience that's an engaged audience than just getting the numbers. So our growth is steady, but it's real people and it's engaged people. Have you ever asked yourself how to juggle work, family and yourself without losing it in all the chaos? I was so busy responding to job, work, life task lists that I really just kind of lost myself in the journey. And so eventually I just decided it was time to make the leap and left my 22 year career behind and went all in to build this business. Megan's mission is to empower women with the secrets of time management, making sure you can handle all the things, be yourself and have lots of fun. And the thing I, I'm most proud of with all of that is that I work 25 hours a week and I take about 10 weeks off every year because I'm a mom. So I run my business schedule around the school calendar. I'm Matt Bellman and this is Million Dollar Creators, where you learn how to become a million dollar creator yourself. Welcome Megan Sumrall to the show. She's the CEO and founder of The Pink Bee. As a business owner, mom and wife, she, she knows how hard it is to juggle all the things while still maintaining your own sense of self. Yes. Welcome to the show, Megan. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. 100%. So let's start off with what's your mission on this planet and what was the inflection point that made you start your business? So my mission is to bring work-life harmony into homes all over the world through all things time management, organization, and productivity, especially for women, uh, just because we tend to carry oftentimes a lot more of the mental and emotional load along with everything else on our plate. So that is really my overarching mission. Uh, my, I guess my own turning point in my life on when I decided to just go all in on this, I actually have over 20 years uh, of a career in the IT space. Um, where I would go into software organizations and redefine all their processes to what I called create harmony out of chaos uh, and started a family later in life myself. And one day when my daughter was very, very young, I had a pivotal point where a woman just very innocently asked me, what do you do for fun? And I realized I didn't have an answer. I was so <laughs> busy responding to job, work, life, task list. Um, that I really just kind of lost myself in the journey. And I realized all of the tools I'd been using for years to plan and manage my time weren't working anymore. So I used all my certifications and background to create a new way of planning and managing my time for myself to solve the problem I was in. And people started noticing uh, I looked different. I acted different. They're like, you know, did you go into the gym? I'm like, no, I just, I'm, I'm rested. I'm relaxed. I'm having fun again. Uh, so lo very long story short, they started asking, well, can you show me what you're doing? And so eventually I just decided it was time to make the leap and thankfully very supportive spouse that said, go for it. Um, and left my 22 year career behind and went all in to build this business. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, and just like a quick double click on, um, your previous life, what you did before you said you redefine processes in the enterprise, like in, in, in the corporate yeah, world. Yeah. So I, I. I did a lot of work with um, software startup companies. Uh, yeah. So my background was in quality assurance where I would uh, really focus on their test teams. But over the course of my years, um, for any software nerds out there, I was on the forefront of the whole Agile, Kanban, Lean Six yeah. Sigma community. I was one of the first uh, Lean Six Sigma black belts, was a certified Scrum trainer. Uh, so all of that knowledge and helping to streamline, you know, very chaotic software environments. A lot of those tools are what I've brought into helping us plan and, and manage our lives with more ease. I love it. Love it. That's a good segue into um, today and your offer that what's the offer today? If I, let's say if, if, if me or my wife, maybe if you know, if she wants to become a customer, um, what does she buy and what value does yeah. she get? So I have, uh, you know, obviously I practice what I preach. So I have a very lean business that I'm really, really proud of, both in what we offer and the amount of hours I and my team work in a given day as well. So I have two signature courses, um, online courses. The, the entry point for most people is called my top program, which is time management, organization, and productivity. It is a DIY program that people can come and purchase. Once they have, they have it 
forever. Um, and it's step-by-step -step training, teaching weekly and monthly planning mastery. Uh, and then the second offering is a 12-month program where they, we go the next tier up to master monthly, annual, and strategic planning. Uh, so those are kind of the two courses. And then I sell physical planners as well. So I have a physical um, kind of e-commerce side of the business. They're not required to use the framework, but a lot of people end up coming into the program and deciding, yeah, I want the, the planner that really supports what I'm learning in terms of how I'm planning and managing my time. So we have physical planners, digital and printable planners as well. And that's that is it. <laughs> very lean, love it, very love lean. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. It's very lean. Um, all of that delivered online? All of it delivered online. Yes. Price points. Let's say the DIY course on demand, right? I mean, what, what's the price point there and what is it for the 12 month program, the master plan? So the, the top program people, when they come through my funnel, they have an opportunity once and once only, and they never see this price again, currently where they can get it for 497 us. Um, after that, it goes up to 597 U.S. And then again, they have that forever. It's the core program with five mini courses that accompany it as well. And then the 12 month uh, kind of membership that that I run is a list price of 1497 U.S. List price means there are discounts. Uh, well, it depends. Once a year, they have an opportunity <laughs> to get a discount. After that, it's Next the 14 Friday, you're too late. <laughs> okay. 4097, um, you said membership. So is that recurring, the 4097? No, they just commit to the 12 months. And then at, at the end of that, if, if they choose to, they're not even signed up recurring. It is 12 months. If they then want to, what I call plan with me for the whole next calendar year, they can opt in to do that. But I don't, I don't like forcing people into something that they've forgotten about and 12 months later they're yeah, like, oh, right. I forgot. so yeah. Makes sense. What's the funnel from awareness to I get my credit card out? Well, I have, and this is one of the things I think has really helped me scale the business the way I have in very small pockets of time. Every single entry point leads into the funnel, which is basically a video uh, training that in that video training, I teach them some key things and then I offer them the program. And so my app um, that's out in both the App Store and Google Play, that is $1.99 US, that's it. It has all these little free training things. It leads everybody into that video. When you download any freebie that I may have, it leads you into the video. When you sign up for my newsletter, it leads you into the video. So rather than creating you know, 17 to 25 little products to sell and trying to manage all of that. What we do is every single thing I build, all the content I create, everything I talk about sends everybody into this funnel. And then once they're in that funnel, um, it's fully automated. And about every three months, they're given an opportunity again to come in and purchase the program. And all of that's happening on autopilot. Yeah. I'd say one of the biggest, uh, really cool entry points that we have is through my app. Uh, so people will find it out on the app store. They'll find it in Google play. Um, and whenever I'm, you know, being interviewed on podcasts or whatever, you know, people I say, where, where can we find you? People are getting sick of hearing, Oh, come download my this or, you know, so I would say, Hey, best place to come check me out and get my style of teaching, go download my app. And so it, it's very catchy for folks. Um, and we get a lot of traffic, um, into my world through the app. Awesome. Um, what tools do you use for all of that, for video training, the app and, and, and so on? Yeah. So the app is hosted by passion IO. So I built my app, uh, very early on there. I, I call it my secret weapon. <laughs> I love that thing. It's a great top of funnel, uh, for us. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, the courses are all uh, hosted on Kajabi. That's really where my email marketing website, landing page, check out all of that lives there. Uh, and then, you know, we're using heavy social media on both Instagram and Facebook. And then I do some, had great success with ads to my app out on Pinterest of all places. So we get a lot of traffic from Pinterest into the app as well. Interesting. I will double click on that in a few minutes. Um, Real quick, just out of curiosity, how do you bridge from the app over to Kajabi? Uh, so inside like all the little mini training courses that live inside my app, the neck of the end of every little course is, okay, so what's the next step? Like where, where do you go to level up from that? And it sends them, there's a link that sends them to the 
the right place. So usually it's to the landing page that hosts that video training where then they can go purchase the program. So it's not, you know, overly sophisticated. It just sends them, you know, click on this and here's where you need to go for the next step to get yourself out of overwhelm. Love it. Um, Take me on a timeline. When did you launch the offer, like this lean stack of of offers that you that you promoted? Yeah. So I first, <laughs> I, I love sharing this because I think we we hear so much about these entrepreneurs that are like, I built a course and I was a millionaire three months later, and then we we're like, well, what's wrong with me? That you know, that's not my journey, <laughs> but I'm really proud of my journey. So four years ago, I hosted my first challenge to sell my top program, and at that time, I was pricing it at two hundred and ninety seven dollars. And I got 100 people to sign up for this little challenge that I was running. And I sold one program, one, one program. And, you know, looking back now, I realized, hey, that was a 1% conversion on a first time launch. Not so bad, right? You know, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, thankfully, uh, I had a lot of people just tell me, hey, if someone has bought it and you're getting good feedback, don't go create something new. Get, get this in front of as many people as you can. Um, so... I think our instinct as entrepreneurs is like, well, let me, I need to go do something else. It's like, no, refine what you have. So um, I, I kind of redid the challenge, worked hard to get more people into it. And the next time I ran it, I converted it at 4%. And again, that was only with 200 people in it. So not a lot of sales, but that conversion number again told me, okay, I have something that converts. So now how do I just make this better and get this in front of more and more people? So the first year in business, um, trying to remember, I think I made, I mean, it was under $100,000, but again, it was all organic, no paid advertising. And then year two, I doubled my revenue. Year three, I doubled my revenue. And then now here we are in year four, and I'm actually, um, I've already hit my revenue goal for this year. And it looks like we will actually grow 115% this year. And then for next year, we're tracking to be at a $1.3 million uh, annual revenue for 2024. So I built, you know, we are now a seven-figure business. So I built a seven-figure business in less than four years. And now we're positioned to actually be generating over seven figures year after year. Amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. It's something so- I'm really proud of. And I, I've... Whenever I hear entrepreneurs, you know, get frustrated with their first launch, I only made five hundred dollars. Like, no, you made five hundred dollars. Like, so how do we just get this in front of more people? Let me let me do briefly quick. Let's see if I got it. So first launch, uh, two ninety seven. One person bought, so you made two hundred ninety seven dollars. Then you're like, okay, let me refine that. You work with this person, um, made it better, launched again. Two hundred people showed up, four percent conversion. That means eight people bought. Eight Is people bought. Eight That's people bought. Eight yeah. people times 300 is 2,400. Then you made in your first year 90K. Year two double is 180K. Year three double is a 360K. Which and year three here, is, I guess, uh, last year? Last year is year three. Year four is this year. Yeah, year four year is And not double, but more. So it must be like 800, 900K or already we'll be just under 800 this year in revenue. Yes. With, and, and here's the best part, with a 47% profit margin. Yeah, amazing, <laughs> amazing. That's really good. It's really good. Really good. Congratulations. Thanks. It's so good. Yeah, I love that. Love that. It's really good. Um, so that, how does it translate? Let's talk about success a bit more. How does it translate into customers this year? And maybe also in a good month, like what's, what's the amount of customers that you have? So right now, um, on autopilot, that that signature top program, um, I typically am selling around two a day on autopilot, meaning mm-hmm. we're not doing anything. People are just coming into the funnel. On average, it's converting at about three point six percent year to date, and that's with cold. That's all cold traffic. Uh, so I'm I'm at about seventy percent profit margin with my ad spend into that funnel. So that's kind of the. For me, that's what I just say. This is what's keeping the lights on for the company. It's, you know, getting those sales coming through consistently every day is paying for all of our expenses. It's paying for the team. It's paying myself, all of that. And then I do about three times a year, I do something live that I do for fun because it's stuff people like. And then usually when I run those live events, um, we'll convert anywhere from 30 to to 45% um, 
when, whenever I run those. So I kind of plan those on my own calendar of when that, that suits me. Uh, and it's just, again, it's selling the exact same program we already have. Uh, but people have, sometimes they just need a little bit more time to get to know you or experiencing you live mm -hmm. to be able to, to do that. Two a day on autopilot that is 16 new customers a mm -hmm. month. A month um, on the top program. Um, you know, we get sales every day through the planner shop as well. So some people end up purchasing the planner first and then getting the program. So, um, you know, that's kind of happening like that way. Top program is 1500, 1500 times. Oh no, that's the, that's the 497. The top program's the 497. Oh, the, uh, for okay, got it, got it. So five hundred times, it's a it's a thousand bucks a day, essentially. It's, yeah, it's about thirty thousand a month coming in. Just yeah. and that's the when I'm not running the live events. On the months I run a live event that I enjoy doing, you know, we'll we'll triple that easily. Uh, and then through the through the app, through my passion app, right now we're getting about two hundred people a month coming into my list that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I mean, they're, they're giving me a dollar ninety nine US to unlock all this free great training. But you know, for me, it I I started it with a dollar ninety nine, thinking I just want to cover the cost of my hosting. We actually make some money off this thing every yeah. year. I feel like I'm getting paid to get leads, which is incredible. I get it. So you want to break even on your passion subscription fee? That's why you price it one hundred and one ninety nine, and you're actually making some little money of it. You get leads, and you convert these leads later then into your into your offers. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's great. Let me quickly. Um, we revenue we spoke already about eight hundred, eight hundred to seven. Let's say seventy k a month, seventy k a month, and the majority of that is one time it's one time right but people it's one time correct yeah. um the the planet palooza the higher price at fifteen hundred dollar um i i allow people to come into that i do a huge event once a year um which i do it it's called my planet palooza annual planning event it's right teach people yeah. how to create an annual plan and so that um like this year we ended up with about 130 members joining mm -hmm. at that 1500 price point. And then we usually capture another 50 or so in January because we're like, okay, the year has started. Like now's the time to get locked in and and plan with us for the rest of the year. We made 150 customers on the 1500 price point. Mm -hmm. That's two point something, 2.25. Um, 225K, is that correct? Mm -hmm. but, yeah. And, and the event itself I charge for. So this year we had about 1,200 people come to the event and that's a $97 price point just to come to the event. So the event at, at, as a whole is about a third, uh, will be about a third of our revenue this year, which is kind of the same it was the last two years as well. Got it. And the the baseline, the thing that always comes in is another third? Must be another third. Uh, huh? Let me see. Okay, I'm. I love that you're asking me these. I was a math major. Like I geek out on all, <laughs> on all the data stuff. Uh, yeah, Thirty times twelve is three sixty, and you just made with the events uh, like two twenty five. Yeah, um, yeah. Plus the event itself, so it cannot be. It's it's maybe even a little bit more than that. Forty percent. Yeah, yeah. It's close to forty percent, and then um, that is then forty and thirty three is seventy three. There's another twenty seven percent. Is that the ecom business? Another twenty seven. So that's the ecom business along with affiliate income. So I have a couple other businesses that I do strong affiliate promotions for, uh, and then I also do workshops. So organizations, uh, small businesses, other entrepreneurs will bring me in to teach. Uh, time management for their teams. And so I get uh, speaking and workshop revenue as well. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, and the thing I, I, I'm most proud of with all of that is that I work 25 hours a week and I take about 10 weeks yeah. off every year because yeah. I'm a mom. So I, I run my business schedule around the school calendar. Yeah. Oh my God, this is amazing. I love it. I love it. It's really good. Um, let me double click on lead gen customer acquisition. So audience size across channels, biggest channel, starting channel, biggest potential channel. So my, um, my social media presence is on the low side for revenue for sure. So I've got, we're just about to hit 10,000 followers on Instagram. Ah. 
Uh, okay. not even, we're going to hit it by the end of the year. We're, we're so, so close. Yeah. Um, Facebook, my Facebook group right now, I have just a free community. I think that's at around 8,000. Uh, and then this year we actually made an, made an effort on my YouTube um, channel as well. I'm not creating anything new for YouTube, but my, so I have a podcast as well. Um, it's actually in the top 20 in it's space okay. in the U S uh, so we, uh, I think we're hitting the half a million downloads there. So the podcast is good that we repurpose nice. the videos for that out on YouTube as well. So we actually kind of really made an effort to jazz that up a little bit this year to start building our YouTube presence. Uh, but we're only at about 2,500 subscribers on YouTube right now. So there's so like, I just get so excited when I think of the potential of I mean, totally. if you, if you say like people grow people. is as the audience size, you know, continues. If you make a million or close to like say 800k with, with 10k uh, f audience size, I mean, what I mean, yeah. there, there's 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 some good potential there. Um, and we're very, um, I, I'm much more interested in having a smaller audience that's an engaged audience probably. than just getting the numbers. So our growth is steady at about almost six percent month over month on increase, but it's it's real people and it's engaged people. And so I six percent month on that. Month over month, six percent increase on Instagram right now that we're starting to see coming through. Um, but again, the the engagement increases with it. So we know we're finding the right people. And I, I'm not interested in doing any of the stuff people do to just try yeah. and get vanity numbers and all that. It it hurts you in the end. That makes sense. Just real quick, like a year ago, if it goes 6% month for month, that is still like adding up. That's like, um, if it's not 10K, it must have been 6K, 5K, something like that. I think it was only around 5K last year. 5K, yeah. And it's predominantly the US? No. So I I have a pretty strong following as well in Canada, Australia, and the UK. Yeah, same. Uh, and we have customers in 15 countries that we know of so far. Makes sense. Biggest channel is? It's a toss up between Instagram and Facebook. So, okay. you know, I'm old <laughs> in the, in the social media world, I'm 50. Yeah. So a lot of my target audience is still out on Facebook. Um, and I think so many people are quick to put all their energies on Instagram, but for my age group, I know Facebook is still good for us. So right now I feel like we're at about 50, 50 between the two. Yeah. Biggest potential channel. I'm a toss up between Instagram and YouTube. Okay. And you started on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. Um, okay, great. Maybe really quickly, very simply speaking, how does your customer acquisition engine work? Like how many, or like um, are you posting the shorts, reels, like, like what's, what's the, what's the secret to, um, to get this engaged? to build up this engaged customer base effectively? So I think the secret is two things. One is consistency. And then two is that you're providing content that they want to hear. Like know your customer, know, know what it is that they want to hear. And that means that I put stuff out there that's going to repel people and I'm fine with that because they're not my people anyway. Yeah, uh, so, my, so I have a social media manager. Uh, I have three contractors on the team. So it's me and three other uh, working moms, none of us working full time. Yeah. So uh, we practice what we preach. Usually any of the work that we are working on is work that we don't need for another two weeks because we all need to have that flexibility. Um, but we are posting right now three times a week on LinkedIn. And yeah. that content is really more for speaking engagements, keynotes, all of that. Um, I believe she's doing, we're doing four reels a week on Instagram and Facebook. So we repurpose the reels on both platforms, three posts a week. Um, I do a live once a week and then we have some stories every day. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Just also real quick, because I have to speed up a bit um, on the OPEX expenditure side, like what's the main cost item is payroll X? Payroll is number one uh, yeah. between my the three contractors that I have. And then the second, which is Actually, no, that's not true. My highest expense is ads. But again, I can stop those at any time, right? So yeah. that's not like a mandatory. So if I'm not running ads, it's payroll. Uh, and then uh, second to that is software. Yes, makes sense. Um, very clear. 
Can you get it up to 10x by yourself? And what's the best strategy to, to win big in the next 12 months? So that's a great question. I'm, I feel like I, the way my team and I are talking about now is like, you know what? I just want to see how far can we take it without bringing anybody else on, meaning without increasing any of our expenses and by really doubling down on our messaging and our content. And so if you had asked me a year ago, like, do you think I'll grow this to be a seven, you know, a seven figure run rate year over year? I yeah. would have said, I don't think so. Now I'm like, yeah, obviously I know we're going to do it in 2024. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that until I see where this goes. But is it, I mean, is it a 10 Xable business? Absolutely. But probably not without hiring some more people. I don't think the four of us alone uh, could 10 X this, but I am confident we can probably three X without changing anything. Biggest thing holding you back? Mm, that's a tough one. Myself, and I mean that in a good way. Um, I've I've done the corporate thing. I've built other businesses, um, and for me, I'm I'm heading into that second stage of life where I don't want to work. I don't I don't want to be a fifty hour a week CEO. And so, I think the biggest thing holding me back is me deciding what do I want my life to be five years from now, and am I aligning the business right? I know I, like if I if I went all in, we could 10x this thing in two years for sure. Uh, but I want to make sure I'm building a lifestyle that is sustainable and enjoyable for me. Love it. Love it. Famous five is the next section. Real quick. What's your favorite business book? The One Thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's the favorite person that you're studying? Favorite person I'm studying... Uh, I don't know. Model, that's something. That's something that that you think. Okay, actually, I can learn from this person. So one of the things I'm really leaning into right now is uh, ManyChat, and I'm uh, leveraging School of Bots, and we're going all in on a ManyChat strategy on Instagram, and we've, we're very new to it, and we're seeing incredible results. Yep, that makes sense. Um, favorite social media channel for inspiration? Instagram Reels. Favorite online tool for building your company? Favorite online tool for what? Favorite online tool for building your company. Like a social media tool or just a tool in general? An online tool could be Zoom, could be Passion, doesn't have to be Passion, could be could be anything. I mean, it's really, it's a toss up for me between Passion and Kajabi because without both of them, I wouldn't have what we have. And I, I wouldn't want to give up either one. <laughs> Biggest thing on your mind right now? Is my, you're going to laugh. We, we just got a new puppy. Like, dear God, is she going to not start barking before this interview is over? Okay, I will hurry up. <laughs> we're almost through. We're almost through. It's not much left. Um, personal section. How many hours do you sleep? Uh, eight and a half to nine. Love it. What's the situation? Married, single, any kids? Uh, I am married and I have a 13-year-old daughter and now two dogs. Wow. What's your age? I'm 50. Just turned 50 this year. Congratulations. Yes. Um, last final question. We also want to give some advice to, audio, to our audience. If you could go back in time and have a conversation with your 20-year-old self, what's the best piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? Well, and it's really specific to, I guess, my career. So, uh, you know, I mentioned I was in the software space and I did a lot of work um, in very male dominated organizations. Like I spent eight years in the aviation space, things like that. So I was oftentimes one of, if not the only one of the only women in the room. And the best advice I could have given myself was to not hide my femininity in my career. I felt like I had to be very masculine in order to be taken seriously. And so I would go back in time and say, just be you, Megan. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Megan. Megan is the CEO and founder of The Pink Bee. Uh, she's the business owner, mom and wife. She made her, her passion um, a profession, I would say, before she was working in, in the male-dominated corporate world as a Q&A uh, or also in startups. Um, 
teaching Agile, working with Agile Kanban methods and Six Sigma. She then actually take her um, discipline and all her process knowledge and all of that over to build her own business, um, which today she has several different offers that she sells to. She does customer acquisition through um, social media, uh, organic, but also paid ads actually. Mm -hmm. She has cracked a seven-figure mark, which is amazing, at a really good profit margin as well. Um, her team is all moms and a uh, very different vibe than what she had back in the old days where she was doing Q&A. Um, yeah, she she does, she can quickly and easily, or she, she knows exactly how to triple the business. Um, she doesn't want to 10 exit because she also wants to maintain her lifestyle, which I think is very inspiring. And um, yeah, things know about her puppy a lot. So thank you so much. Thank you. For being on the show, sharing your passion, taking us to the next level. That was Megan Samuel. You learned how important automation is and how to convert hard by saying, go download my app. So how can you unlock the next level in your business?